Hello, OPH family. Hey, hey. Ah, I hope and pray everyone is doing well. And uh, yeah, I hope you had a great week, good weekend. And uh, yes, keep fighting the good fight. Life is worth living. Um, so lift up, I uh, hope, yeah, hope, hope that uh, if you're counting obstacles, right, and challenges and suffering, uh, that it's the, an opportunity for conversion. Um, so yeah, a couple highlights from my life recently. Uh, to, one of the big highlights is morning walks. So <clears throat> quick backstory, a couple months ago, daylight savings time, fall back, spring forward happened. And uh, one of those, anyways, so I woke up early because my body's like, hey, it's time to wake up. And you're like, but no, don't, you, didn't, you didn't know about the daylight. So anyways, I'm up. And so uh, anyways, long story short, um, I'm like, hey, Jelzy, let's go for a walk and drink coffee. And so um, we actually found it delightful. And so since then, we've been doing, <clears throat> regularly, we've been doing morning coffee walks. And it's been revolutionary. So it's been glorious. It's been just, I don't know, it's been good to get out of, the, out of bed, uh, off the couch, to move around, to drink coffee, and spend time with my beloved. Um, so quite the blessing and uh, a wonderful way to start the day. Uh, I think sometimes in the morning when I first wake up, I can just be a, a general oaf. <laughs> uh, and uh, just kind of mosey along and just be a little bit <laughs> slothful. And so anyways, it's good just to, it's been such a blessing to get out of bed and just start the day. So anyways, it's been a big blessing in my life. Don't know if, don't know if, if that, that might appeal to you. Maybe you're already doing it. Maybe you, you do something even better in the mornings, but uh, it's been a blessing in my life. So that's been a highlight lately. Uh, other highlights, uh, this will be, appeal to a very small niche amount of people out there, if any, <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, big Lord of the Rings fan. Um, love Lord of the Rings, love the books, love the movies, love Lord of the Rings. Amazon's thing, uh, that's, that, nothing about that. All right, anyways, so that's the one thing. Another thing, my son, Legos, loves Legos. I enjoyed Legos as a kid. Um, I got into it for a while, um, and then whatever, grew out of it, whatever. So my son, hardcore, the family, hardcore, his friends, hardcore, and anyways, Legos. So anyways, big news, after like, 10, 15 years, they announced a new Lord of the Rings Lego set. 6,000 pieces, a thing of beauty. It's expensive, but it's so pretty. So anyways, that, that came out this week. That was pretty exciting. So <laughs> if any of you happen to be Lord of the Rings Lego fans out there, you already know this, but what a great week. And so anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, all right, let's <clears throat> let's pray. Dive in. Uh, uh, I'm feeling ambitious, feeling risky. Let's try to do two chapters today. Let's let's give it a try. Let's let's, let's dive in. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sweet Jesus, we love you. We need you. We are broken. We are foolish. We are wounded. We're prideful. We're arrogant and slothful, <laughs> and so much more. And we need you. We need. We need you, our Savior. We need your grace. We need your love. We need your mercy. Um, so we just humbly come before you, asking for an outpouring of yourself, your love, your grace, your mercy. You, we need you. We thank you for the opportunity to read and study your word. May your word speak to us. Be a source of encouragement. Um, be a source of, of strength. Um, give us food for the journey. As we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, let's dive in. The Gospel of Luke, we finished chapter 12 last week. We are diving in chapter 13. Verse one and following. There was some present at that very time who told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered thus? I tell you, no. 
But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. It was 18 upon whom the tower in Sil Siloam fell and killed, killed them. You think that they were worse offenders than all the others who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. He said to the vine dresser, Behold, these three years I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? He answered him, Let it alone, sir, this year also, till I dig about it. Put on manure. If it becomes fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Okay, so again, that call, that reminder to bear Fruit, right? What good is a fig tree if there's no fruit, right? It's it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like a denying its essence, right? So like this call for us to be fruitful. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, are, are we bearing good fruit, right? Um, is my marriage bearing good fruit? Am I making my spouse holier? Right? Or am I a source of sin for her or him? Right? Um, <laughs> is my family bearing good fruit? Is the relationship with my kids bearing good fruit? Is my work life bearing good fruit? Are my friendships bearing good fruit? Is my free time and how I spend my free time, is it bearing good fruit? All right? Because if not, right? Jesus says, cut it down, cut it down, right? But yeah, this call to this call to conversion, right? Um, to pray and discern, to look at those things in our life and what, what's not bearing fruit. And then like 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 the like the vine dresser said, like let's let's work on it. Let's till the soil, let's put on fertilizer, let's put on manure, let's 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 address the issue, right? Um, instead of saying, Well, it bore no fruit. Um, good. Uh, verse 10. Now he's teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. She was bent over, could not fully straighten herself. Jesus saw her and called her and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your infirmity. He laid his hands upon her. Immediately she made straight and she praised God. But the ruler of the synagogue, in, uh, but the ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath to the people. There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him, You hypocrite! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead away to wander it? Ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? As he said this, all his adversaries were put to shame. And all the people rejoiced at all the glorious things that they were done by him right <clears throat> again you'll know a tree by its fruit right look at the fruit of christ right this daughter of abraham who's been bound by satan for 18 years is set free right um but then the the, the twistedness of the yeah the jewish religious leaders right that they, they somehow they miss it right <laughs> somehow like that that is the what they saw was, here's this evil man who's purposely working on the Sabbath. Subversive, evil. Jesus is like, you fools. You treat your sheep with better kindness than this woman, your ox, your donkey, right? And so, right, um, we, we have to be careful, right? You know, sometimes where we where we, we we can be deceived, right? And so then we stop we, we stop seeing things, right? Things only exist, or we, like we we have, we have our preconceived conclusion, and so then we read that into everything else, right? And you see, you see the the, the yeah the the evil fruit that comes from that with the Pharisees, right? Who who re, who reject him, and so it twists, it perverts how they see everything that Jesus says and does. Um, Verse 18, he said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like? And to whom shall I compare it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his garden. And it grew and became a tree. And the birds of the air made nests in its branches. And again, he said, to what shall I compare the kingdom of God? 
It's like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till it was all leavened. Excuse me. The, uh, so in, in Matthew's gospel, we get these uh, combined with a lot more about the kingdom. It's like seven parables. Um, but, but here in Luke's gospel, we get, we get these two connected. Um, he says, what is the kingdom of God like? And, and so again, in context of this chapter, right? He's like, it's fruitful. I'll tell you that much. It grows. It, it it's blossoms. It's successful. It does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God, what, what is it? It's like a mustard seed, right? Which starts really small, right? But then be, experiences this explosive growth, right? And so, you know, so, so the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, right? So does this connect with heaven? Well, for sure, right? Heaven is, is, is the kingdom, amen, right? But is it only in heaven, right? Well, well not, not only that, but, but is it not here on earth? right? Isn't Jesus planting the seed, which is really small, right? He has his 12 little apostles. He's got his, his band of merry men, right? He's got, he's got this, you know, the, 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 the small, you know, people of Israel, right? like, who hears preaching, witness miracles, etc. right? Small, right? But what, but what happens over the next century and the next century and the next millennium and the next millennium, right? Look what's happened in the history of the world, right? Catholicism started off with 12. Uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, Feast of Pentecost. Peter gives them and speaks. 3,000 are converted. 12, 3,000. Later in the uh, in Gospel, in Acts of the Apostles, 5,000, right? And then you fast forward to today, 1.2 billion. <laughs> so yeah, it skips a little bit there, but you can kind of see where that was headed, right? But yeah, yeah like... Like, that's the Catholic Church. Um, and so, so it's interesting, right? The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, right? Yes, it's, 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 it's eternal home, it's glorified home, right? It's, it's heaven itself, right? But, but it's interesting, like, like the kingdom exists here on earth in uh, the church, right? Um, and then the, the, the other parable, the parable of the leaven, right? Um, she takes, she hides in three measures of meal to all leaven. So again, is that, is that directly, is that most aptly applied only to heaven? So I'm gonna take heaven, I mix heaven with something, eh, right? But the kingdom of God here on earth, right? What do we do? We take it and we mix it with the world and it helps the world rise, right? The world's better because of it. Um, and so that's, I mean, that's the gift. It's like, like if you ever have the opportunity to study church history, read a church history book, uh, take a class, hear a talk, right? But it's 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 a it's it's a commercial. Like <laughs> both of these parables are like like spoilers for the, the history of the church, right? But that that's the church, right? That, uh, that's the that's what's happened the last two thousand years, right? The church has gone out into the world, right? And it's been mixed in, and it makes her rise, um, and so beautiful, right? And so and yeah, this gift of like I guess Catholics, right? Like like the gift of of the church, right? I, I haven't absolutely, right? That's our home. <laughs> That's where we're at, right? But but it, but it exists here on earth. Yeah, we see that in this parable. So, reading on verse twenty-two, he went on his way through through towns and villages, teaching, journeying towards Jerusalem. Some said to him, "Lord, will those who are saved be few?" He said to them, "Strive to enter by the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter, will not be able." Once the household had risen up and shut the door, he'll begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us. He'll answer you. I don't know where you came from. He'll begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. He'll say, I tell you, I don't know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There you'll weep and gnash your teeth when you see Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, all the prophets in the kingdom of God, you yourselves thrust out. And men will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. Be some, and behold, some are last to be first, and some are first that will be last. All right. So again, again a couple of things here. One, right, Lord, will those who are saved be few? He said, like, strive to enter by the narrow door. Um, yeah, it's 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 not easy. It takes work. 
um, and, and be, be careful not to, to deceive yourselves, right? There are many of you who are going to be like, walk up to Jesus and be like, hey, Jesus. And he's like, nah, nah, bro. No, no, no. Right? Yeah. Where, where others will come, right? From the north and south, the east and the west, and then we'll be welcomed into the kingdom, right? And again, to Jesus' audience of the day, right? What's that? What's he saying? What's he implying, right? It's the, it's the, the Jews, the Jewish people who've been prepared for this moment are, are, are missing it. They're missing out and not seeing it, right? And yet, oh, th those from outside, those from the four corners of the earth will be brought in uh, to the kingdom. Behold, some are last will be first and some are first will be last, right? And so, <laughs> unfortunately, right? Definitely a sense where we can see that, app, that being fulfilled with the Jewish people. They've been first. They've been God's priority throughout, <laughs> uh, throughout salvation history. Uh, and yet sometimes they get, they get it last. <laughs> and then here's these Gentiles, right? Who have not been, who have not had the same treatment that the Jewish people have, right? Who've been, last so speak and yet they're the first to get it and they like they hop on that <laughs> they hop on that train they, 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 they see it and they they convert verse 31 At that very hour some pharisees came and said to him get away from here for herod wants to kill you and he said to them go and tell that fox <laughs> behold i cast out demons perform cures today and tomorrow and the third day i'll finish my course nevertheless i might go on my i must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killing the prophets and stunning those who are sent to you. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under your wing, her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken. I tell you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so <laughs> a couple things here. One, Right here, we have Jesus using arguably a nickname, <laughs> and so they're like, uh, they're like, uh, <laughs> they're like, hey, they're after you, and he's like, yeah, go tell that fox. <laughs> so, I think we have a, a scriptural argument for nicknames. <laughs> Go and tell that fox, right? So they're like, ah, her, her wants to kill you. And Jesus is like, you're not wrong. Any, but not, not yet, not yet. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, right? I'm in solidarity with all my, all the, 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 the prophets I've sent before, right? I'm, I'm headed to Jerusalem, right? Um, and so I, we, we, we've seen this already, but just the, 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 the different ways that Jesus foreshadows, foretells his passion and death, right? That third day, I finish my course. Um, verse 35 is interesting. I behold your house for saying, so you will not see me until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, right? And so I, I think they're an, an allusion to Palm Sunday, where he makes his arrival and they shout it from the rooftops. So connection there all right moving on chapter 14 look at us crushing it <laughs> chapter 14 one sabbath when he went to dine at the house of a ruler who belonged to the pharisees they were watching him behold there was a man before him who had dropsy she spoke to the lawyers and pharisees saying is it lawful to heal on the sabbath or not they were silent then he took him and healed him and let him go he said to them which of you having a son or an ox has fallen a well, and I merely pull him out on the Sabbath day. And they could not reply to this. <laughs> uh, look, right? Jesus, whoo, he, he's a little gutsy, right? He's a little intense, staring him down, right? Calling them out. Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? They're silent, and he says, watch this, and then, and they, they, in the moment, right? Yeah, at least this particular group, they got nothing. To, they got nothing to say. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we just—it's you know, it's interesting throughout the Gospels, right? The, the different approaches of Jesus, right? Um, and, and through prayer and discernment, like what, what, like 
the di different situations call for like a different response, different approach, right? But here's one, here's one where he's, he's being a little aggressive, right? I mean, he's like, he's calling them out. He's like, I know you want to kill me, right? And you keep bringing about this, right? And he's getting, and then he's, he's flipping the tables, calling them out, right? Daring them to do something, right? Pur pur like purposely healing, right? Um, and so it's, <laughs> right, here, here's an example where he's kind of <laughs> leaning in and, and taking on his enemies. Call them out. Call them out. Verse 7. Now he told a parable to those who were invited, and he marked how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, When you're invited to any, by anyone to a marriage feast, do not sit down in a place of honor lest a more eminent man than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give this place this man, and then you'll begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you're invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes to me, say to you, friend, go up higher. And you'll be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. He who humbles himself will be exalted. He said also to the man who had invited him, when you give a dinner or banquet, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or your kinsmen, or rich neighbors. Let's see. Also invite you in return to your pay. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and be blessed, because they cannot repay you. They will be paid at the resurrection of the just. All right. So here we have Jesus, right? Um, re reminding us <laughs> to be humble. And a great, just a, a great story, right? I mean, like, you can, it's interesting, right? Like, so like, like, it's just the, 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 the staying power of, of his, of his parables, right? There's a party, right? And you, you sit, you sit in this special place of honor and then someone more important comes and they come to you and you're like, yeah, you have to get up. And they're like, oh no, shame, embarrassment. <sighs> right? Um. He who will be hum who, who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Um, and so, yeah, a call to humility. Right again, kind of going off the, the theme earlier from the last chapter. Right, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Right, those that are um, yeah. So here again, right, uh, if you seek to exalt yourself, you'll be humble. If you seek to humble yourself, you'll be exalted. Um, you know, I think it's, it can be such a uh, sneaky trap <laughs> uh, today, especially with social media, right? There's just this need to exalt ourselves, right? For um, for self gratification, for um, for recognition, for pomp and importance, and, and, and Jesus is calling them to something different, right? Um, he who humbles himself will be exalted. Um, and so, yeah, just, just, yeah, that call to humility. Um, and, and, and I, yeah, and I think it's just, I think it's one of those things like, like once you get on that, once you get on that, that, uh, that, once you get in that habit and that pattern, it's like, how do you get off, right? Once you exalt yourself and you get the rewards and the accolations for being exalted, right? It can just kind of become that never-ending rat race, right? And, but if you're humble, like if your identity, your 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 self, your ego, your self importance, like it, that's not a part of you. If you, because like if you know who you are, if you know whose you are, like if you know that you're the beloved son of the Father, right? It, it, those those things just don't matter in the same way. They're just not that important. And there's this freedom in that, right? And so then all of a sudden, right? You're 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 you're, you're this selfless genuine authentic person that for some reason everyone loves because <laughs> you're not pretentious egotistical and just a, a maniacal person is using everyone to gain self-importance and acclaim and stature <laughs> so that and then and then too right, jesus saying you know Careful to congratulate yourself on how, how gracious and kind and wonderful you are when all you do is you help people who you know will help you back in return. <laughs> yeah. When do you go and serve people that can't do anything in return? How about we, how about that's our focus? How about we start there? Because um, there's something, yeah, it's a little bit different 
there. Um, you'll be blessed because they cannot repay you. Be repaid in the resurrection of the just. So, so today, uh, this week, this month, right? Who, who have we purposely chosen to serve that cannot repay us? Have we served the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind? Right, and, and like there's the physical sense, there's the, the, the emotional, spiritual sense, right? There's the you know, different ways to look at that. But like, how how have we have we how have we invited? How have we served? Right, those who cannot repay us. Right. So, and if y'all remember the days in elementary school when you were in the the, the lunch room, right? Maybe you had like a sick new uh, snack that everyone wanted. And you're like, whoa, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so maybe your mom splurged and bought you fruit roll up or fruit by the foot, and you're like, and you bring it and you're like, I'm gonna give some to all of y'all. And they're like, oh, thank you, right? But in your mind, you're like, and now you all owe me, you're in my debt, and I will, I will collect these debts. <laughs> maybe that's just me, and maybe I am a sinful man. <laughs> that, that much is true. Right. But, anyways, yeah, like, that's the silly example, but, but, but how often right, we 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 can we can do things right because we we just want something back. And Jesus, is like, what if you love those who can't give you back anything? Um, and so um, yeah, I, a point a point for of self reflection. All right, uh, reading on verse fifteen. When those when one of those who sat at the table with him heard this, he said to him. Blessed is he who shall eat the bread in the kingdom of God. We said to him, a man once gave him a great banquet, invited many. The time for the banquet, he sent his servants to say to those who had been invited, come, for all is now ready. But they all like began to make excuses. First said, I bought a field and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And they said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And they said, I've married a wife if I can't come. So the servant came and reported to the master. The householder, in anger, said to his servants, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city, bring in the poor, maimed, and blind, and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there's room. The master said, Go out to the highways and hedges, compel people to come in. The house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. The, there's a funny scene in the Chosen season three, episode seven, right, <laughs> where they they have uh, <clears throat> the, the the apostles. I think it's Andrew and, and Philip uh, are going and preaching, and they're they're preaching to like a a, a Gentile Jewish mix, and, and they and they <laughs> and they, they the, the scene has them share the terrible, and it goes terrible because the Greeks are like, hey, wait a minute, and the Gentiles are like, wait a minute. Are you saying we're the hedges, we're the highways? And then the Jewish people are like, hey, wait a minute, you're saying we didn't listen? And then like, yeah, whatever, they all fight. And like, they're like, we, we, uh. <laughs> Anyways, kind of funny. <clears throat> so, yeah, so, but anyways, <laughs> it's funny too, because like, like Philip and Andrew are like, we thought they would love it. We're like, we thought everyone's invited. <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, the, the, the parables. So, so a couple things. So one is like, We've been invited to the banquet, right? If we don't come, that's a problem, right? Uh, and, and so I, and the different, the different things we can say about this, but one of the things we can say about this is like, you know, like for, for those of us that are like, I love Jesus, I love it, right? But mass, mm, not for me, not important, right? Is it, you know, is, could, could we apply this parable to those situations, right? where we couldn't bother to come to the banquet. Um, we made, uh, as it says in verse 18, they all began to make excuses, right? We've been invited to this great banquet, right? But we've got to come. <laughs> we've got to show up. Uh, and so be careful of excuses, right? And, and so and in this parable, right, like they, by all accounts, they give some good excuses, but Jesus says, when it comes to you and, and, and showing up at the banquet, like that is the priority. 
we, we, we've seen this before uh, in Jesus' teaching, right? Um, let me go first, bury my dad. He's like, let the dead bury the dead. <laughs> and so, again, he's like, he's saying, like, I don't care how good your excuse is. It's an excuse, right? Because nothing should separate you from the banquet, right? From this relationship with me. Um, so yeah, so, so I think I think to, to to many of us like that that warning right of of um, we have been invited right we've been called um, and and we we we, 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 we we will be held accountable for our attendance right uh, hopefully it doesn't mind if we're tardy because uh, I struggle sometimes with that <laughs> Ooh, I got work to do. Uh, so that, and then of course, there, there's the fact that G, like Jesus extends the invitation, right? And so earlier, you know, like, like is there, are there a few people in the kingdom and Jesus is in their gate, right? But, but be, be pair with this, like, like he, he, he yearns for all of us, right? Um, like bring out everyone, um, but we've, we've got to respond. We've got, we've got to show up, um. Verse 25, now the great, now great multitudes accompany him, he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, and yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> there again, right? The excuses, right? We, what what is our number one priority, right? I think we see this later on in the Gospels, right? So tragically, so, so clearly and so tragi tragically with Pontius Pilate, right? He, he knows Jesus is innocent, especially of whatever <laughs> what these wild accusations are, right? And he, he's kind of opposed to having an innocent man crucified. He's like, I just, yeah. <laughs> And so he, he tries these different ways to, 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 to please everyone, right? He tries to release Barabbas. He has him scourged. He questions him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? He, he, um, so he, 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 he send, yeah, sends him off to Herod. Um, so he, he tries these different outs, but, right? but each one fails, and each one fails, and each one fails. And with each failure, right, there's this pressure. What are you going to choose? What are you going to choose? What are you going to choose? In the end, he he chose the crowd. He chose the the pressure. He chose his own the, the comfort of his own uh, title, his, his leadership, and, and, he, and he knowingly condemned an innocent man to die. And, and so, uh, you know, I think I think that's part of what Jesus is saying here is like, what are our priorities, right? Because there might come a time in our life when when we have to choose God over and above even something that, 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 that is a good priority, right? Our father and mother, our wife and our children, our brothers and sisters, those are good things. <laughs> they're, they're great things, right? Like they're the greatest of blessings, right? But, but is there a situation where I put them as a higher priority than you, God, right? And, and, and Jesus is saying like, that, that cannot be the case, right? Like, like God has to be the number one priority. Everything has to flow from that, um, and what, what what's what's so interesting, right? What's so beautiful is that that any time we we you know the more we succeed in placing God as that number one priority in our life, what does that do for all our all our other priorities? Right, they're all elevated, they're all raised up, right? And any time we put something else in the place of God, well, what then happens, right? It, throws it all off balance and makes it worse. And, and so yeah, that, that, that call, that call to conversion, right? In that what is our number one priority, right? And in the end, right, if it's, if it's something that's good, that's extremely good, right? But if, I, if, I, if that's more valuable than God, right? It, it, can, it can lead me astray, right? Reading on verse 27, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And so I, I just, I love 
I love Jesus' his, his explicitness, his clarity, right? What a, what a unique religion that Jesus offers, right? You have to carry your cross and come after me, right? If you're unwilling to carry your cross, you cannot be my disciple, right? <laughs> where do I sign up? That sounds amazing. <laughs> A religion where you get to carry your own cross? Oh, well, that sounds awesome, <laughs> right? It's so different. Um, it's so different than just a, a weak, shallow, <laughs> empty, whatever, right? World religion or news fad, right? The heart of the gospel, Jesus says, right? If you're going to follow me, if you're going to become Christian, if you're going to be Catholic, you're going to be in the kingdom, you're going to have to take up your cross, right? And so we're not surprised. We shouldn't be, at least. We're not, we shouldn't be deceived, surprised, shocked. Right, this is a part of it. Um, to take up our cross and follow him. For which of you, designed to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he's laid a foundation, is not able to finish all who see it begin to mock him, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish it. <laughs> but what king going to encounter another king in war will not sit down first, take counsel as able with 10,000 to meet him, comes at, against him with 20,000. If not, well, there's yet a great way off. He sends an embassy, asks for terms of peace. So therefore, excuse me, so therefore, whichever, whoever of you do not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Oh, oh, oh. What is it going to cost you? It's going to cost you everything, right? It's going to cost you your father, your mother, your child, everything, right? I want Jesus wants it all, right? And I guess that's what's so wild about the call, call of Christian and Catholicism, right? Is it's that the heart is an idea, a morality. Um, it's a person. It's a God who is love, who loves us. And so what is it? In love, right? He, he doesn't want part of us. He wants all of us. Right, and so there's this, this is death to self. And so there's this surrender, but it doesn't end in death. It ends in resurrection. It ends in that newness of life. Um, but but and but but again, he, he's upfront. Like this is the cost of discipleship. This is the cost. This is what's gonna take to follow me. <clears throat> and, and I, I love the story, and it, it's um, it's humorously, I think. Um, an apt example considering local events, right? So uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is the new bridge. <laughs> so in case you're not familiar with it, we're building a bridge that's supposed to be completed like two or three years ago. And then a couple, a couple months ago, they came out and they're like, yeah, there's like six deficiencies in the design of the bridge. And as it is currently designed, will collapse. And all of Corpus Christi was like, what? Like, it should have already been completed. You've been building this for years, and you're discovering this now? How? How? <laughs> like, <laughs> right? And so, uh, yeah, again, I don't, you know, I'm not intimately involved in all the inner workings, or whatever. Maybe there's some great reasons, right? But just the, the outside, like it's just it's, it's 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 sadly annoyingly comical, right? It's like we're gonna have this. I was <laughs> teasing my, my 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 family members, like 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 it's gonna be this like modern art <laughs> work, right? Like uh, this this symbolic sign, these massive pillars, right, that are disconnected. And there's a bunch of memes on Facebook, and anyways, whatever. Um, Right. Otherwise, he's laid a foundation, not able to finish. All who see it begin to mock, saying, "This man began to build and was not able to finish." <laughs> That's Corpus Christi. Sometimes, Ooh, good. Right. But anyways, whatever. Um, but, but but I love it. Like we 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 can connect with that. Like we relate. Right. Uh, no one wants to start building. Right. Have done all this work and then just leave it at that. Right. And so that 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 phrase to count the cost. Right. And so Jesus says. Right. 
if you want to come after me, you must deny yourself and follow me. You must take up your cross, right? You must choose me over your husband, your wife, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, even your own life, right? What do I want from you? What do I expect from you? I expect everything. Otherwise, you can't be my disciple. <laughs> we talked about this last week, right? But there's this, there's this trendy words in our, in, our, in our day and age, one of which is like inclusion and welcome. And like, there's a truth to it. And I, like, 100%, right? And, and, and when you see that in Christ um, throughout the Gospels, right? But, there, but there's, there's also this, this hard truth to Jesus that says, right? But, but in the end, right? You have to conform yourself to me, right? Because I am truth and goodness and beauty and love itself, right? Apart from me, you can do nothing, right? And so essential in our walk with Christ is a death. And death is hard, <laughs> right? But it doesn't end in death. It ends in resurrection, right? As Christ himself has shown us. Um, but yet we've got to, we've got to follow that. Like, like, we, like he's shown us the example and he invites us to do it likewise. And so it's like, what a call like to conversion, right? And I think, because I think, you know, some of us think in our mind, well, I, you know, I can give him like 96%. Like I can give him a solid 88, right? Yeah. Like most of the things, sure. Why not? I mean, there's a few I disagree with. Like I'll kind of like consciously object whatever but like jesus jesus is like no like I, I count the cost right don't don't say you're gonna follow me right and then begin this great building project and they're like oh it's hard oh, oh he actually really does want all of me and then you just quit you fall away right count the cost like see it through like <laughs> well, i would cry is it worth living yes right but, but see it through, have the courage, the conviction, the strength, right? the reliance on his grace to see it through. Uh, but what a, what a call, right? It's a call. And one of the beautiful things about, like, about, about, about this is, is it's not a call to mediocrity. It's not a call to lukewarm. It's not a call to good enough. It's a call to the heights, right? It's, it's the greatest of adventures, the, <laughs> the most epic of challenge, right? Like this, this union, this communion to God, with God, right? Like, like, what could be more beautiful? Let's close out with verse 34 and 35 and call it a day. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is fit neither for the land nor for the dunghill and throw it away. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And so again, that, what a poetic way to kind of just tie in this whole, these whole two chapters, right? The fig tree, right? A fig tree should produce figs. Salt should be salty, <laughs> right? If your salt's not salty, it's trash, right? Throw it out. Like it's, it's good for nothing, right? And so we're called to bear fruit. We're called to be, if we're salt, we're called to be salty. <laughs> Stay salty, my friends, right? Um, and so like, 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 be like, like this, this call to be, our, to be true to our deepest identity, which is, lies in God, not in the, the the, the fickleness of the whims of, the, of our, our culture and our emotions and what I eat for breakfast. Like, no, like there's an eternal truth, right? That, that, that's, that, that was built into the foundation of the world. that has been revealed by God, this truth, beauty, and goodness. And like, we're called to live in that, right? And if we deny that, right, then, we, then we, we, we lose our identity. When we lose our identity, like, ah, like if non-salty salt, what is it good for? <laughs> Right? A fig tree that produces no figs, what is it good for? It's not even a fig tree. So um, this, this call, right, like this call to like know our deepest identity, which is in God, which is in Christ, and then to, to live that, right? And it requires everything, right? We have to choose Christ before all things. We have to pick up our cross and follow him. We have to surrender it all. But as we're going to see as we move, continue with the gospel, right? It doesn't end in death. But in the end, it ends in resurrection, right? But, but we've got to go, we've got to carry our cross. We've got to go through that. 
Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sweet Jesus, we love you and we need you. Lord, you're, we, you, call us, you call us to the heights. You, you want all of us, right? And, and at times that sounds nice, but sometimes, right, 